Welcome to another video for STAT 420. In this video, we're going to start getting into chapter 11, which I think is kind of a fun chapter personally. Um, so a lot more kind of thinking about modeling and interesting things that you can do. Um, and so in this first video, we're going to talk about dummy variables and modeling, which I'm sure kind of prompts a question right off the bat of um, why we're calling something a dummy variable. Um, I don't really have a great answer for it, but I can tell you what it is. Um, and that is a predictor variable that only takes uh, two um, responses, um, either a zero or a one. And we typically do this when we're working with um, categorical variables, like a factor variable that has, uh, maybe, they're, maybe they're ordered categories, maybe they're not ordered categories, um, but we have kind of these discrete categories uh, that we want to assign um, um, to um, values in our model, but we don't want to model it like a numeric variable where we have this kind of constant um, particular relationship dependent on the value, but instead the value is just kind of a placeholder to basically saying present or absent. Um, so the simplest case is to work with a binary variable where we start with two categories to begin with, two different levels, um, and we can just assign one to zero, we can assign one to one. Um, however, as we'll see later, um, we'll work with variables where we have three or more um, different categories, and we can talk about what to do with that and how we can still represent that with a dummy variable in the model. Um, and basically what's going to happen is we're just going to have a couple dummy variables to represent one variable that has three or more categories. Um, so yeah, let's, let's start with the simple case though. Um, we have a binary variable. It takes two different categories, and we're going to assign one to be a one, one to be a zero. Um, and let's say, uh, maybe just for example here, maybe what we're studying for our response would be something like um, seriousness of, of an accident or seriousness of injury after a car accident. Um, and a binary predictor that we could use to try to model that would be whether the passenger was wearing a seatbelt or not. Um, so, so if the passenger was wearing a seatbelt, um, that leads to one prediction. If the passenger wasn't, that leads to a different prediction. Um, and we might still have, you know, one or more numeric predictors as well in this model. So, so maybe beta 1, x1, um, where x1 represents a numeric predictor like we've seen before. Um, but let's let x2 be kind of this binary predictor, like seatbelt. Um, so then um, we, either the passenger is wearing a seatbelt or they're not. If they are, this term gets added in to our prediction. If they, they are not, this term is just zero and it just goes away. And so that's how we kind of make that distinction and um, change our prediction based on a binary predictor. Um, so here's another example where we're going to start with what our model looks like without adding this binary predictor. Um, so if we're trying to model, this is kind of a, a silly example, I don't know why we do this, but um, trying to model somebody's weight based on their hip circumference. Um, so we know these variables should have a positive correlation. They, they have a very strong positive correlation um, that if we know someone's hip circumference, we can probably make a pretty good estimate for their weight. Um, and so this relationship is working. This model is working. It's just a very simple model of y hat equals some intercept plus this relationship with this numeric predictor, hip. Um, However, we also know that if we know the, the person's gender, or I guess really what it, this is really biological sex, it's male and female, um, but the data set I'm using labels it as gender, so I'll, we're just going to call it gender, I guess. Um, so if we know the uh, participant's gender, we can actually make a better prediction for their weight in addition to, to what we have with hip already. Uh, so, and that's because uh, men, um, I'm, I'm guessing this is because men typically um, are taller, so even though if we have a man and a woman of the same hip size, we'd expect the man on, in general to weigh more because I'd expect the man in general to be taller, um, to have kind of a, maybe just have a, a bigger frame in general. Um, so because of that, if I know both hip size and I know gender, I can make an even better prediction for weight than if I just knew hip without knowing gender. So it kind of leads to this, this question of, can I use this information in my model? And the answer is yes. Um, I can use, I can use um, a gender as a dummy variable, and I can essentially create two best fit lines in this case. Um, and I have some, some markings from when I went through this the first time. Um, so, so we still make a prediction based on hip, 
Uh, but we're, what we're going to do is, so let's say we have a hip size, a hip circumference of 50. I'd go up, and then I would have to decide if this person is male or female, because if they're male, my prediction is going to be a little bit higher than if they're female. So the model I'm essentially fitting now is going to be y hat equals our intercept, plus again this, this steady relationship, this linear relationship with hip size, plus this other value that gets added when the gender is one thing or not. Um, and so we assign one of those categories for gender to be, um, to be one, so x2 equals one when that gender is the case, x2 equals zero when that gender is not the case, and that's how we kind of make that, that change. Um, and so because of that, because x2 is just gonna be one or zero, then if it's one, I just have this value beta two that just gets added. So it doesn't matter what hip size is, if hip size is over here, or hip size is over here, this beta two value is the same. And if gender is male or gender is female, um, whichever one's assigned to the category one, that is just some constant that's essentially adding to my intercept value. Um, so notice here the slopes are the same. The slope is not affected by gender. Only um, the intercept really is being affected by gender, kind of this, this constant difference that I need to anchor my, my best fit line to the y-intercept. So because of that, this, this right here is really only adding to my intercept or not adding to my intercept, depending on whether it's a one or a zero. So we can use least squares regression to fit this model. So again, um, we create this model, um, you know, y minus beta naught plus beta one x one plus beta two x two, and we're basically trying to find the squared residuals of this to however many data points I have, and I'm trying to minimize the squared residuals to the smallest value. So, so we've we've done this before. We don't need to keep doing it again when it gets more complicated. Um, this is not important to us. Um, but that's the idea going on. We're still using this least squares um, regression approach to, to fit these parameters. And we let R do that for us. Um, we get these values. We have an intercept. We have a value for the slope for hip. And um, in this case, female was assigned to, to, um, to be x2 equals 1. And that is the coefficient we add to the intercept when x2 is female. Now, um, in terms of assignment here, so one thing I do want to point out is that R, um, unless we specify, which we can, R will naturally assign one category to one, and it will show up here in the output, and then the other category is going to be zero. Um, now, oftentimes, I believe, believe the default in R is that the alphabetically first category gets assigned to zero, the alphabetically second gets assigned to one. For whatever reason, I don't even know why when I did this, female got assigned to one somehow. Um, so we're just going to run with it. Um, so if I kind of write this model out like contextually, like write the variables out here, really what I have here is my prediction for weight is going to be this intercept value plus my slope for hip minus 27.865 when gender equals female. Because if gender equals male, this is a zero and the term just goes away. So I, I kind of have two different slope, um, best fit lines again, like I, like I said before. So this is the best fit line when gender equals female. And so maybe what I'll do is um, just kind of multiply this by one. And this is when gender equals female. And then I have another one here. And it's going to be the same thing. except that this term does not exist because gender is zero. So it's gonna be minus 27. When gender equals male. And again, if this is true, it changes my intercept. If it's a zero, this term just goes away. 
it doesn't matter. And so that's how I make that constant difference. That's how I make that prediction a little bit more accurate by including um, a binary predictor. We call it a dummy variable when we assign it to zeros and ones, um, but it's not actually that dumb. It's actually very smart. It's doing something very cool. Um, so yeah.